Good evening and welcome to the General Election Candidate Forum for Fayette County. Uh, this evening we'll start with Connorsville Township Trustee. Uh, I'm joined by William Wason. Um, Mr. Wason, please take 60 seconds to introduce yourself to the community and tell us the who, what, when, where, and why of William Wason. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having us and hosting this forum. Uh, it gives people a chance to meet everybody. Uh, my name is William Wason. Uh, most of everybody knows me by Billy Wason. I've lived here in Fayette County all my life. Um, I spent the last 30 plus years at the Fayette County Sheriff's Department. Uh, eight years of that was serving as the Fayette County Sheriff. Um, I retired June the 1st and I'm still wanting to be involved in the community and Connorsville Township Trustee position is available and I'm up for election and I live in it. So I thought it was time to maybe get back into the game and more, contribute more to my community than just being retired. What changes, if any, do you see coming to the Office of Trustee if you're elected? Um, I'm really not sure what is in there uh, going on at that, in that office at this point, but I'm sure Mrs. Harvey's doing a fine job. Um, I don't hear anything, which I'm not sure what people hear about the trustee's position anyway. Um, but uh, there's some resources I'd like to bring in if, if I'm lucky enough to get elected. Um, I have a lot of resources in finance, uh, in banking, in uh, budgets, in... Uh, mental health care and those kind of things I'd like to offer be able to offer some of that to some of the people that come in needing services Where do you see the biggest room for improvement in the trustees office? Um, from being on the outside and looking at it um, I, I think maybe some public relations of letting people know that the trustee office is there what it's uh, what it's there for and what services are available to the people that need it um, I mean that when you read through the manual that office has a lot of responsibilities, mm -hmm. so. The, the final question, uh, why should constituents vote for you? Um, I have, I mean, I have 33 years um, at the Sheriff's Department uh, as a police officer, as a jail officer, um, two terms as the Sheriff. I understand county government, I understand budgets. Um, I understand running a department on a budget and staying within that budget. Uh, I spent 20 years in the school in the school corporation as an SRO and teaching drug programs. I think I have a great uh, insight on what our community needs and what it wants. And um, I'm one of the most uh, conservative Democrats you'll ever meet. I can ask some of my friends. Um, and I, I'm pretty good at deciding what people need versus what they want. And there's a huge difference between the two. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Wason. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wason will be the... Connorsville Township trustee Democrat candidate November 8th. He'll be facing off with Tarina Murray uh, on that election for the Connorsville Township trustee. Uh, and we'll be right back. <music> Welcome back to the General Election Forum. We will now be joined by Jackson Township trustee candidate Brandy Steinert. Uh, Ms. Steinard, uh, just take about 60 seconds to tell us the who, what, when, where, and why of Brandy Steinard. Okay. Well, my name is Brandy Steinard. I am a 13-year resident of, of Indiana. Nine of those years I have been in Jackson Township. I was actually born and raised in Ohio. My husband will jokingly tell you that I'm just born and raised a worthless nut. I have been with the Fayette County School Corporation for 12 and a half years as the school health assistant. I'm an active member of the St. Gabriel Catholic Church. I'm a 4-H advisor for the Jackson, Mini Jackson Jumpers for six years. I'm the treasurer of the Fayette County Sheep Association going on two years. I'm support staff for the Everton Volunteer Fire Department. I work with the Everton Cemetery Board and the Everton Water Department. I am dedicated to all those positions and do the best that I can to make it the greatest it can be. And that's my goal for the township trustee. Yeah, what changes, if any, do you see coming to the office of the trustee if you are elected? I don't see a whole lot of changes other than I do have an established location where people can meet me um, to talk about their concerns or pick up applications so that if they need assistance they can meet me somewhere and they don't feel like they have to bring me into their home immediately and not be uncomfortable with me. I want them to know that they have a safe place so that they, they can meet me and um, just voice what they need. Okay. Where do you see the biggest room for improvement uh, in the trustee's office? Um, 
I just, at this time, I just want people to not feel like they are going to be belittled. I want them to know that I'm here for them, establish a good relationship with them, with our community, and get them any answers that they need, help them wherever they need to be helped. And if I can't help them, hopefully I can guide them where they need to be guided, um, or I can get them the answers they need. Okay. Just take some time to tell the constituents of Jackson Township why they should vote for you. Okay. I may not have been born and raised here in Indiana, but this is my home. This is where I would like to raise my three girls. I've been with my husband for 13 years, and I have found that this is a great place to live. My goal is to make it even better than what it already is, if, I, if at all possible. I understand that we all have times where we struggle, and I want people to know that there's somebody there to help them and support them in any way possible. Thank you so much, Ms. Steiner. Thank you. The, the Jackson Township Trustee Office, uh, the, the contest is between Gwen Demkovich, the Democrat, Brandy Steiner, the Republican. Uh, you can make your selections November 8th at the general election. Uh, and I thank Ms. Steiner for being here. We'll thank be you. right back. Welcome back to the general election forum. We'll now have candidate from District 2 County Council, uh, Robert Stewart. Unfortunately, Harold Gordon could not be with us this evening, but Mr. Stewart's here and ready to answer some, okay. some questions. Uh, Mr. Stewart, please just take uh, about 60 seconds to introduce yourself to the community. Tell us the who, what, when, where, why okay. of Robert Stewart. I'm, I'm Bob Stewart. I've lived in Fayette County for the last 50, 60 years. I've been in business and real estate and appraising. and. Uh, know the community, know the people. I've coached a lot of your kids in baseball and I've been involved with uh, men at the jail and jail ministry. I know the community quite well. And being in business, I've had to work with budgets and that's what council, the council does is budget. And I, I'm very conservative on that to make sure that you know, we've got extra money to work with for emergencies which always come up. So that's why I feel that uh, I've been on it for two years and uh, it's right down my alley is trying to make things work. Okay, we'll start with the first question. Financially, what is the biggest constraint facing county government, in your opinion, and do you have a plan to solve that problem? You really want an answer to that question. Yeah. Well, this isn't maybe something that's popular, but the first thing is we are taking far too many properties off our tax rolls by entities that have tax deductions, but they're setting vacant, not being used for the purpose that they are buying them for. Uh, you can go up and down Chester Boulevard and see, hey, Reed Hospital is a great organization. I love Reed Hospital. But I was showing a church needed parking, a lot next door to it, sitting vacant. Who owns that? The hospital does, sitting vacant. Why is that off the tax rolls if they're not being used for hospital purposes? That's, that's the first one. And the second thing is we're not getting enough grants for our community. We are not keeping our nose to the grindstone. Other communities are getting grants we miss out on. And we recently had to fund, help fund a 911. There was a grant that could have took care of that, but it had already expired by the time it came to us. And we would got a year or two ahead of time, we could have got that grant. We've got to do that better. Um, the next question, employment, employee turnover in various departments has been a point of contention up to and including a lawsuit filed by the Superior Court over wages for his employees. Do you think employee pay is an issue for Fayette County government as a whole? And if so, how does council solve that problem? It's not a problem. I wasn't here. I wasn't on the council when that lawsuit occurred. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of things that I believe both parties could have done differently, but that's here or there. But we just recently gave the council, the 97 city employees $2,000 a year raise. We gave a 30% raise for part-time people. We're always willing to listen to county employees. I've got a very good relationship with them. They know if they have a problem, they can come to me and I'll do what I can to help them. Maybe we can't, but we always try to. They're, they're good workers and we always try to give them a good uh, a wage we could. Uh, you know, recently, uh, September 9th, uh, the design release for the Fayette County Women's Work Release and Detention Center uh, was granted. Uh, the price tag on that um, originally higher than, than expected and the, the long-term cost of the, the facility. 
As the fiscal body for the county facing declining revenues, what's the plan uh, for the finances long term for the, that facility? Well, for one thing, Brian, I'll take issue with you on that issue that we're not in declining. I have been in the real estate business in this county for 50 years. I never thought I'd see two and three and four hundred thousand dollar sales. We're sending them up to five, six hundred thousand dollar sales. We now have new homes being built out in Tarkin and Heights that are coming on the tax rolls. We got 22 commercial properties up north that you had a part in mm -hmm. that are coming on the tax rolls. We have money coming in. We are not a poor county. We are doing a very good, thank you, and people are moving into Fayette County. I have graphs here to show just exactly what we're at. Right now, our average price of our homes is $124,000. That's, that's tax money coming in. And in, uh, in the next four, three to four years, we're going to finally get the jail paid off. That'll be $400,000 we'll have to help fund that. And, but we, we've got money. We had a million and a half surplus last year that was able to help put money toward that facility that's going to help it get built because we have really been conservative at county council and we have brought that up. Well, got the right graph here, but it, we, have, we have absolutely brought that everything up in this county to where we can pay our bills. When they took over in 2015, there we were at 470000 Now we're at $6,910,000. Mm -hmm. Our county's doing just fine. Mm -hmm. The next question, as a member of county council, you're obviously responsible for the finances. While property tax revenue is about $7 million annually, uh, the county uh, receipts and disbursements are around $60 million annually. How can Fayette County residents be sure you're a good steward for their money? Well, for one thing, our revenues this year was $10 million. And we were able to put 200,000 aside to add on to our uh, extra money to work with if we had to. Um, again, I work with budgets. Uh, Mike Winta and, and Scott and the others on the county have, have really tightened us up. To, we, we're paying our bills. But what we can't do and what I will not do, this county cannot afford a $30, $40 million new jail. But what we did do was get a good maintenance man who is doing work on that jail and getting up in good shape. Our courthouse had never been insulated. We got that insulated and got that done. I think better use of our funds is important, using it for the right purpose. And even on some things that I question if it's gonna serve the community better, the thing that we have to have is that it's not my money, it's the people's money. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to take care of that and keep their taxes as low as we can. That's what we're trying to do. Awesome. The final question, just take some time to tell the constituents why they should vote for you in County Council District 2. For just what I said, that I'm not a career politician. I'm a businessman. I've had to meet budgets, raise a family, stay on a budget, get, pay our bills. And that's what I think we need to do as a county. I love Fayette County. I love the people here. We've got hardworking people. And when they pay their taxes, it's my job to make sure those taxes are used for the right purpose and not just some pipe dream out here that uh, we have to use it for the good of the people. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Stewart, for being with us this evening. Uh, this is Bob Stewart, County Council District 2. Uh, remember to vote on November 8th, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the General Election Forum. We now have candidates from District 3 County Council. We have Sharon Cranfill and Jerry Gobin. The first question will be for Ms. Cranfill. Ms. Cranfill, please get, take about 60 seconds to introduce yourself to the community and tell us the who, what, when, where, and why of Sharon Cranfill. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. And uh, I'm the Republican candidate for District 3 on... Uh, Fayette County Council and my husband and I are um, have had and owned and operated a business in the community for over 25 years and we are the founders and I am the executive director of the House of Ruth program here in Connersville. We're a recovery home for women who struggle with addiction. 
We've been helping women with recovery for over 12 years, and the House of Ruth has a very good success rate of 70% of women who, have, who completes the program in its entirety. And I continue to be very active in this community and have served on several boards. My passion for this community is to grow and become more productive and very and watch the success rate in our community. I'm pro-life and I support our rights to the Second Amendment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mr. Gubbin, the same question for you. Please take some time to introduce yourself. Uh, tell us the who, what, when, where, and why of Jerry Gobin. Okay. <laughs> my name is Jerry Gobin. Uh, uh, my wife's name's Pamela. We've been married, uh, we just had an anniversary, 49 years. So we've been fighting it out for 49 <laughs> years. <laughs> But uh, no, uh, I have uh, five children. I have 11 grandchildren. Uh, we go to uh, New Heights uh, Christian Church. Before I went there, I was uh, a deacon at uh, Eastview Baptist Church until it, we had to shut it down because the people left and there wasn't enough people to maintain it anymore. Uh, I'm a registered land surveyor in the state of Indiana. And uh, uh, that's about it. <laughs> the, the first question will be for you, Mr. Gobin. Financially, what is the biggest constraint facing Fayette County government, in your opinion, and do you have a plan to solve that problem? Well, the biggest problem with Fayette County government is the fact that they don't take in enough money. Uh, the employees all uh, are underpaid. You can contact other counties around us and in the state and you'll find out that they all pay more than what Fayette County does. And uh, I think that uh, Fayette County is a good community. I enjoy living here. I love it, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. But uh, we need more industry. We need uh, better jobs, better paying jobs. Uh, we don't have enough good jobs. Uh, you, can't, you can't raise a family on... Uh, $12 an hour like McDonald's pays or whatever. Uh, uh, that's a, kind of a slap in the face trying to raise a family like that. And that's hard on the welfare system. And uh -huh. uh, it's uh, an all around not good. Okay. So. Ms. Granfield, the same question for you. Financially, what is the biggest constraint facing Fayette County government in your opinion? And do you have a plan to solve that problem? I totally agree with Mr. Gobin because I do believe that jobs is a number one right. issue that we have. And in my opinion, our biggest restraint or our constraint currently is a decline, declining economy and inflation, of course, we're all, oh, and, and that goes back to the jobs. Right. You know, I mean, we have ever increasing gas prices, uh, housing, everything. And you know, if you ha don't have the income to compensate for that, then we have issues. And there's a variation of problems or constraints in our community. And like I said, number one would be the jobs and searching out more opportunities uh, for our community uh, for employment. And I guess my plan to solve that problem would be establishing goals and priorities to better serve our community in more productive and efficient ways, making sure we are using our money in the areas most needed to better the community in a more positive manner. Okay. The next question will start with you. Okay. As Mr. Govan alluded to, Fayette County uh, employees t tend to be lower paid than our, our neighboring counties. You know, employee turnover in various departments has been a point of contention, up to and including a lawsuit filed by the Superior Court over wages for his employees. Do you think employee pay is an issue for Fayette County government as a whole, and how does Fayette County Council solve this problem? Well, I'm not on Fayette County <laughs> Council yet, but I do, um, I do believe there is an issue. Um, and it's with the turnover because the offices, if you talk with, you know, anyone in the courthouse, their, turn their turnover is, 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 is a lot. So, and the pay is the majority of the problems because I think we have a great courthouse. We have, uh, I, I was in a meeting the other day and they were talking about our Fayette County Courthouse and how friendly and the atmosphere and everything that is, you know, in the mm -hmm. courthouse, but people have to live also. So I do believe um, that that is an issue. 
<coughs> excuse me, but for the 2022 budget of the courthouse and the county sheriff's department, uh, there has been appropriated $2,000 for raises and a 30% pay raise for part-time employees. So I do believe county council is doing um, what they can with the monies that they have. Right. So I think that is a good start um, for K Fayette County Council to help maybe offset some of the costs and maybe help with the turnover with okay. the pay raise. Mr. Governor, the same question for you. If you would you like me to re repeat it? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Uh, now the uh, county employees have been underpaid for years. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been in government for a long time and, and when I first went in it was under, they were all underpaid. And that's one reason you have uh, people leaving all the time, because uh, so like the sheriff's department and the city police used to be a, like a $10,000 difference in salary, you know. And people get trained at the sheriff's department, and the city would open up a, a slot for a police officer, and they'd move over to the city. And you can't blame them. I mean, $10,000 is $10,000, you know. But uh, that is one of the main problems, I think, that the, they have. Uh, yeah, they have addressed a little bit of that in the last year or two and uh, have raised some of the salaries, but some of the other salaries need to be raised also. And then there's some departments that are lacking some employees that they need and they can't afford, and that needs to happen. Uh, it's like the Area Plan Commission. Uh, they need a, an inspector for the building inspector, and the guy that's running the Planning Commission is having to, having to do that and that's taken away from his efforts to do the planning that needs to be done. So yes, that's a, it's a major problem. But yeah. uh, I think uh, at the end of the budget period, whatever monies you have left over, uh, you could you know, try to help that. And that's right. what the County Council has been trying to do. Yes, they have, right. yes, I agree. So the next question will start with you, Mr. Gelbin. On September 9th, uh, DLZ Indiana uh, received their design release from the state, state for the Fayette County Women's Work Release and Detention Center, which will likely come in at a higher than expected price tag and long-term cost over the lifetime of the facility. As a, the fiscal body for the county facing declining revenues, what's your plan uh, for the finances of this facility long-term? Long-term. Yeah. Well, the county jail, uh, is about to be paid off. In the next year or two, they will have that money left over. And I think you could take some of that money and put it towards that work release program. And that would do, do it for the long-term amount. And then whatever's left over, maybe you could put it back in the budget and help the county employees mm -hmm. with, their, with their salary issues too. So there's a double mm -hmm. whammy there, I think. Okay. Ms. Cranfield, the same question for you. Would you like me to repeat the question? No, you're fine. Uh, the price tag, I know with the meetings that I have been attending, um, and, and I talk with some council members, the price tag will not raise due to an existing contract they have because they allotted 5% interest uh, to, to, so it, if it does fluctuate, they did allow for that. And the long-term cost, and the lifetime of a facility, that kind of, with the question, because I mean, any long-term or any lifetime facility, you're going to have repairs, you're mm -hmm. going to have to, right. you know, there, there's going to be something, and there's going to be some costs anticipated, it's inevitable, and due to it being a new facility, you know, there should be none in the near future, so before they have to actually start thinking about that, um, they're going to have, I feel like, with the new build, new roof, new everything, mm -hmm. it's going to maybe buy some time to have, like right. you said, some more money that they can offset, you know, and, and plan, because they already have planned for it. But the reason that this facility is needed, because I know I've had people ask me that question, and I just wanted to let them know that reentry programs and reentry courts are designed to help returning citizens successfully re-enter society following their incarceration, thereby reducing recidivism, improving public safety, and it actually saves money because it has a place for the women. Because we've had a men's, you know, uh, work release for quite some time, so it's just going to allow women to maybe go through some programming and go through, you know, some uh, maybe some skills maybe, you know, going to work and, and make uh, some money to, so when they do re-enter the community that they're, they're in a better shape 
than when they were incarcerated. So uh, that's the whole goal. Absolutely. Now, uh, if elected as a member of, of county council, you would be responsible for the county finances. <laughs> well, property tax revenues uh, are about $7 million annually. The county has about $60 million in receipts and disbursements that come out. How can Fayette County residents be sure you are a good steward for their money? Okay, being the founder and the executive director of a nonprofit organization, we're funded by private donations, we're funded by grants, and I'm very familiar with the responsibilities of a budget. I have a very slim one. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm, I'm, I know how to report, make sure funds are used specifically what they are meant to be used for, and I'm also familiar with reporting and being accountable to an executive board. I've been attending Fayette County Council meetings to learn how that their budget is working in our community and how it's used. I'm willing to do any trainings or educated, education needed to better understand my commitment in this position because I have not been, and I know my opponent has been very <laughs> <laughs> successful in his political career, career, but I feel like this is something that I am, I would be good at and I believe that um, I, I, would, I would do a good job at it because of working with finances as much as I do. Awesome. Mr. Governor, the same question for you. Would you like me to repeat yes, the question? Please. As a member of county council, you'll be responsible for the county finances. While uh, property taxes generate about $7 million annually, the entire county has about $60 million uh, in receipts and disbursements uh, each year. How can Fayette County residents be sure you are the best steward for their money? Well, I've dealt with, with budgets uh, for about 46 years, and uh, I, I know how the operation works. I've been before county council hundreds of times to ask for money for bridges and road projects that we've done. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we, uh, I got lost there. <laughs> um, Repeat that question again, yeah. would you? I got lost Yeah, there. as a member of county council, uh, you'd be responsible for the county's finances. Well, property tax revenue is around $7 million annually. The entire county has about $60 million in receipts and disbursements. How can Fayette County residents be sure you are the best steward for their money? Well, uh, like I was talking about, uh, I've dealt with these budgets over the years, uh, and I never spent all of my budget. Now, some offices spend all their budgets. I went to county council one time and they cut my uh, surveyor's budget drastically and they cut the bridge fund drastically. And after I explained to them, I said, well, you're telling me that if I spend all that money, then you'll give it back to me. Well, they they soon figured out that, you know, if, if I, as, as used to say on the top of the budget, this is an estimate of annual expenses. All right, and that's what I turned in was an estimate of what I thought it would take to run the, my department. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I, I've done the highway budgets, I've done the surveyor's budget, I've done the Cume Bridge budget, I've done all those budgets. But if you don't spend it all, that's a good thing because you're turning that money back into the general fund to be used for necessary things. And I've, I've been kind of an ultra-conservative all my life, you know. It, it, People ask me. They say, "Why are you a Democrat? You're, 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 you talk like a Republican sometimes, you know." But, but it's true. Uh, I, I just feel that way. My, my grandparents were that way. They were ultra conservative, and uh, uh, I just feel like that I'd be a, a good steward of the county's money. Mm -hmm. Final question for you. Take some time to tell the constituents uh, why they should vote for you. Uh, well, I just got through answering mm -hmm. part of that. Uh, being an ultra conservative person and being budget oriented and no, knowing how to use a budget, and I have for all these years, uh, I feel like I make a good county councilman because of my experience in the past. Okay. Ms. Cranfield, the same question for you. Uh, take some time to tell the constituents why they should vote for you. Okay. I'm dependable, I'm trustworthy, and I'm a team player. I listen, and I'm an excellent communicator. I love this community and I want to help in the betterment of the Fayette County citizens. I have worked with budgets, I work with budgets daily, and I um, feel like that I would be a very good uh, Fayette County Council. Awesome. Thank you so much. So a big thank you for, to Ms. Cranfield and Mr. Gobin. Uh, please remember to vote on November 8th. 
uh, for your candidate for County Council District 3. We'll be back after this break. <music> Welcome back. Now we move on to our, our sheriff candidates. To my left, we have Zach Jones, and to my right, Craig Pennington. Uh, the first question uh, will be for Zach. Um, just a, uh, a short introduction. Just uh, tell the community the, the who, what, when, where, and why of uh, Zach Jones. All right. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Brian and Channel 3 for allowing us to, to do this. Um, my name is Zach Jones. I am the Republican candidate for sheriff here in Fayette County. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident, um, been with the sheriff's department for 23 years now, the last 13 serving as the chief deputy, which is the second in charge. I've done that under the past two sheriffs. Um, I started in the jail, moved my way onto the road, and now serving as chief deputy. I have four kids and two grandkids, and my wife is uh, Maria Jones. Um, about it. Mr. Pennington? I'm Craig Pennington. I'm the Democratic candidate for sheriff. I am married to Jackie Pennington. I am a lifelong resident of Connorsville. Um, graduated from Connorsville in 1987. And um, I have two boys, Donovan and CJ, and a stepdaughter, Ashley Hoeing of Rush County, and three beautiful grandchildren. And um, I started out of the jail also and I moved on to the city police department where I retired there in 2018. I then moved on to Cambridge City Police Department where I am now a, a full-time student resource officer. Okay. Mr. Pennington, taking from your experience in law enforcement, what makes you best qualified to lead Fayette County Sheriff's Department? I've had a almost 30 year career now with, in law enforcement. I started out at the jail um, I became a supervisor in the jail. I then went on to the Connersville Police Department, started out as a patrol officer, um, became a supervisor. I worked in narcotics. I um, became a DARE officer. Um, I then, in 2004, I was promoted to detective um, after being promoted to captain. So I went to the detective division after patrol. I spent 13 years in the detective division. Um, I spent a temporary stint in the uh, front office as deputy chief. And now I'm a full-time student resource officer. During that time, I've been able to be part of um, hiring boards on the county and city, um, be part of detailing SOPs and um, a lot of different jobs within the department. And um, I think all that training and all that experience would lead me to be a quality candidate for sheriff. Mr. Jones, the same question for you. Would you like me to repeat the yes, question? Yes, please. Taking from your experience in law enforcement, what makes you best qualified to lead Fayette County's Sheriff's Department? Uh, like Craig, I have been in this uh, career since I was 21 years old. Um, starting in the jail, being promoted to corporal in the jail, um, which you're in charge of a shift. And then uh, under Frank Jackson, he promoted me to the road division. Uh, I served seven years on the road uh, as a sergeant, uh, promoted to a sergeant eventually on the road. And then under Sheriff Wason, uh, he promoted me to chief deputy. I've been doing that for 13 years now. Um, I believe that's the longest uh, tenured chief deputy in Fayette County history. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that because I think we've done a lot of good things uh, at the sheriff's department in the last 13 years. Um, I'm also a uh, school resource officer. I've been doing that for about 15 years part-time. Uh, also teaching the Too Good for Drugs program uh, in elementary school. Uh, that's probably the most rewarding thing that, that I get to do is educating third graders about making good choices. Um, as far as what makes me the best candidate for this job, uh, I think my experience speaks for itself. Um, again, I think we've done a very good job over the last 13 years uh, at the Sheriff's Department. We've, we've had some ups and downs, but we are heading in the right direction, I think. Everybody says we always need uh, more, more road deputies. Uh, we just pulled that off. 
uh, adding two deputies. So hopefully we'll have somebody working or two people working almost all the time on the road. Uh, that's been a long time coming because normally we only have one, uh, one at a time. And getting that extra help uh, is going to be big, especially with what we've just seen in Richmond uh, with Officer Burton. Um, safety is, is number one thing. And uh, having two guys all the time is going to be a huge thing for Fayette County. And that's something that we just pulled off at the Sheriff's Department. Thank you. The next question will be for you, Mr. Jones. Um, both of you have leadership, supervisory experience in law enforcement uh, in the past in your careers, but this would be the first time being the quasi HR director, budget manager, the, the person in charge of, uh, of everything in that uh, department. Uh, what experience in those fields do you offer the county? Okay. Uh, again, 13 years is the, the second in command. Um, I've worked under two pretty good sheriffs. Uh, they have allowed me to help with the budget and sometimes even do the budget. Um, right now we're looking, the, the Sheriff's Department's looking at about a $2 million budget. Uh, we also have a, a safety tax that the Sheriff sort of is in uh, control of and he has to maintain that budget as well. So about two and a half million dollars that uh, we have to, to uh, use the best way to, to satisfy the taxpayers. I'm proud over the last eight years I believe we've only had to ask for additionals once. Um, that's because we ran out of money in a, a fund, so we had to ask for more. We are pretty good, and I am pretty good, at moving money around to make it work out so we don't have to ask for more. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is uh, when I started out as a road deputy 20, almost 20 years ago, I was making $24,000 a year. We currently, starting next year, will have that salary up to $47,000 a year starting out. Um, it's a giant pay increase, uh, and that's thanks to Sheriff Wason and Sheriff Laughlin, but if you ask them, they will tell you that I was the brains behind that pay raise. Uh, it didn't really increase taxes because I went through the budget and I found out what we could cut, where we could cut it to implement the pay raises. That has helped us steal people from other departments because for a long time we were a training ground and uh, we were losing a lot of guys to the city police. We currently just got one back from the city police. And uh, recently, uh, we just got a guy from uh, the Union County Police or Liberty Police Department that is going to come work for us. So if we can get quality candidates, candidates uh, and road deputies to stay at the Sheriff's Department, um, that is our ultimate goal. And I think that we have done that by uh, utilizing the budget and taking care of guys um, to try to get them to stay. Okay. Mr. Pennington, the same question for you. Uh, having been in leadership supervisory roles in the past in your career, this would kind of be the first time that you're uh, the, the total man in, in charge as HR director, budget director, all of those things. What experience do you have uh, in those fields to offer the county? <clears throat> I've always been a part of a team. And working as a team, I don't care where good ideas come from. I think I could... I've been good at surrounding myself with good people, smart people, people that will help me do my job. Um, I believe the Sheriff's Department has those kind of people. I've been around those kind of people. I know what they look like. So I would use those people to help me do my job and to be a good steward for the money that we have to abide by in our budget. I'm a small business owner, so I know what happens when you have to have something and how that is different from when you want to have something. So I can, I've been able to marriage those two ideas that I can put off what we may want for another time and recognize what we need to have and what we have to have. Thank you. The, the final question, we start with you, Mr. Pennington. What changes, if any, would you make to the operation of the Fayette County Sheriff's Department under your leadership? What areas do you think need the most improvement, whether it be in law enforcement, service to the court, the jail, training, et cetera? I'm big on training. I've always, always gone over and above my posted hours, what you have to have just to get by to the next year as a police officer. I've always wanted to double or triple that. Sometimes I haven't been able to do that, but I was always big on training. The more you know, 
the more valuable you are. So I would want my police officers under my charge to do the same. And I, I, could, I think I could allow them to do that. Um, that just makes a better department. Training first, and then as a full-time SRO, I think the most, the most valuable person or, or what a community, when a community wants something to protect their children, they want an SRO in their school. Well, I'm doing that now and I would like to take the current SRO program, take a look at it, make sure that we're doing the things that we need to do that I've been trained to do, as in mentorship, enforcement, and instruction. I don't think those things have been done that well in the past, but in the future I would like to see them done. And the last thing, I've been involved over many years with the, the Denise Flum case. And that's very close to my heart. And I can't guarantee that we could ever have a conclusion to that case, but as sheriff, I promise I would try. Um, that, that case, I jumped into that case the first time I became a, an, an investigator. I graduated a year after she would have graduated. So it was, it was very close to me. And those, those parents of Denise, I would really like to give them some closure. Um, I can't promise anything about that, but I, I can guarantee that as a department, as someone who has in, held their part in that investigation, that I would try. And the new police officers that are coming up, they're young. Um, I've been in this for going on 30 years now. That sometimes is put on the back burner. Um, I would like to introduce them to the case, show them why it's important, and show them my passion for that. So that would be three of the things that I would work on. Thank you. Mr. Jones, the same question for you. Would you like me to repeat? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I completely agree with Craig. Um, I've been with uh, Denise's parents, Dave and Judy, and, and seeing the hurt that they've experienced. Um, it's a parent, he's a parent as well, and I am. It's your worst nightmare. Um, I've witnessed firsthand the last four or five years, nobody has worked on that case harder than Joey Laughlin and Chad Blaze over the last four or five years. And Craig did an awesome job when he was working it as well. Um, that will continue. Uh, that has to continue because there have to be answers uh, for what has happened to, to the Flum's daughter. Um, so that, again, will continue. And with, along with him, training. Training is a big thing. Recently, we, we just lost uh, Bobby Reveille, uh, Leonard Baker, and Billy Wason. That's about 75 years uh, of experience at the Fayette County Sheriff's Department. Um, replacing that experience is going to be next to impossible. But training is something that we have to step up in. Uh, guys sometimes don't like to go to training, but we have to uh, give, make them have a passion for training. I just signed up two guys to go to firearm school, uh, two more guys to go to instructor development so they can become trainers. Um, that's something that we have to step up on because this world's getting, uh, getting dangerous. Um, again, police officers are getting uh, targeted and to have trained police officers that are not only tactical, but respectful to the public. Uh, I'm not a big fan of police officers yelling at citizens or uh, just being rude to them. Um, we just got body cams. Um, another thing that I'm proud that uh, was part of, I was part of, body cams are a great tool for us because they protect the, the citizens and they protect us. Um, so utilizing training teaching guys how to deal with people, that's something big that we have to do. Uh, the SRO, our SRO program, uh, that's something that Sheriff Laughlin has let me lead the last couple years. I am super proud that uh, we got a full-time guy at the high school now. Um, we have uh, four guys that rotate at the middle school and 
We just added uh, a part-time guy that goes to our county schools. Uh, my plan is to get one in every school. Uh, that's going to take a lot of work with the uh, school board, um, the superintendent, but my plan is to get somebody, a qualified police officer, retired police officer, uh, veterans that are qualified, getting people in our schools to protect our children. That's the number one thing. Uh, police, old police officers can get jaded and become angry, and they're sometimes hard to deal with, but everybody will protect kids. When it comes down to it, uh, you can have a guy that's been on for 35 years that hates taking calls, but he gets a call at a school, he's going to go as fast as he can to get there. Um, so the SRO program is something that I want to also ramp up and uh, protect our children. Another thing that I'm, I'm huge on is tr uh, our services in our jail. Uh, getting more classes, uh, rehab, church services in our jail is something that I am going to push uh, whether I'm the sheriff or not because a lot of people don't realize that inmates, some of them weren't brought up just like us. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. Uh, they've dealt with generational welf welfare. They've dealt with generational drug abuse. Um, so they don't know how to make the right choices sometimes. Derek Harrison is somebody that comes in and teaches the program. He was a former inmate. Uh, Mike Horning, former inmate, comes in, does church with our, our inmates. Um, getting them the life skills uh, and the opportunities that everybody, should, that everybody deserves just because they're inmates doesn't make them bad people. They've just made bad choices. And we need to teach them how to make these good choices. Uh, recently, uh, Josh Jarbo just graduated from uh, drug court. He was somebody that was in our jail, uh, messed up a couple times, but now he is thriving. Just graduated from drug court, works for the county, is an excellent employee and an excellent person. He's doing good things. Um, this, this weekend, we're actually having a graduation for our therapeutic community where we're gonna have a church service and uh, feed the inmates food because they have accomplished uh, a tough class. It's um, a few months long and there's nothing better when I look on my computer on the cameras and I see 19, 20 inmates up at eight in the morning uh, listening to a guy talk about life skills. And then you look at all the other blocks that don't offer that class and everybody's asleep. So inmates waking up at eight o'clock, if you have anything to do with jails, you know that don't happen very often. But when we give them a chance to be better, they are trying at least while they're in jail. Uh, we just have to figure out how to transition that out into our community. Okay. One, one final uh, question that uh, is not on, on the list of questions. It's just take some time to tell the Fayette County voters why they should vote for you. Okay. Um, why should you vote for me? I believe uh, Craig is a great guy. Um, I've learned some stuff from Craig. Uh, he's sort of been a mentor to a lot of police officers. Um, he comes from a great family. Uh, but when it comes to knowing the sheriff's department, I don't believe anybody knows the sheriff's department quite like I do. Uh, I'm just recently completed the uh, road patrol SOPs. Um, it's about 700 pages. Uh, that was a, t a chore, but uh, I just completed that. I've uh, wrote the jail SOPs about six years ago. Um, so when it comes to the sheriff's department, being the chief deputy for the last 13 years has really prepared me to take over uh, as the sheriff. Uh, again, I don't think I'm better than Craig, but I think I'm more prepared uh, than, than Craig. So I would really appreciate your vote uh, November 8th. Um, again, I'm Zach Jones and I'm the Republican candidate for sheriff. Mr. Pennington, the same question for you. Take some time to tell the Fayette County voters why they should elect you sheriff. Again, I would like to thank Zach because it takes courage to run for a public office. And he's done a wonderful job at his career and his family. 
And that's the kind of people we need running for office. This, these two police officers right here, I think represent the most qualified two police officers who's, who have ever faced each other in an election in our county. I have a wide array of experience in a whole bunch of things. No, I haven't been chief deputy for 13 years, but every position that I've taken, I think I've left it in a better place than it was. Every department that I've worked for, I think I've left it in a better place than it was. I was, throughout my career, I think I've, I've represented myself with integrity and grace. And through those, all those years, I've maintained multiple jobs to go along with law enforcement. I'm not afraid of hard work. And this would be hard work, Zach can tell you. This would be a hard job to do, but I think I'm able to. And I'm not afraid of asking for help. I can recognize talent when I see it. And I think I could surround myself with enough talent that we could all be successful in the entire department. So. Either way, whichever way you're going to vote, please vote. Thank you. Mr. Jones, Mr. Pennington, thank you for being here this evening. I really appreciate it. I'd also like to thank John Pazzi at Channel 3 for allowing us to be here this evening. And for all of you at home watching, thank you. Please remember to vote on November 8th and have a wonderful evening.